In this video, I'm going to try to finish up the Kibby Flappy Bird game that I've been kind of developing in the past two videos here. If you haven't seen those videos, go check them out. I'll put a link um, maybe like up somewhere on the top of the video here. And so at this point, I've got the background kind of scrolling back there, and I've got my base pipe classes figured out. So the next thing I need to do right now is um, spawn these pipes sort of continuously and have them move across the screen, all right? So let's just go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to first remove these two pipes, which I had instantiated in my KV code, because I want to do it, I want to create them more programmatically. And actually for now, I'm going to throw in a button that just kind of starts the game. So maybe text is start game. And uh, size hint will be none none, so it doesn't take up the whole screen. And then on release, so when you click the button, I'll say app.start game. Okay, so let's go create the start game function. Um, in my main app class, I will def start game. And we need to do two main things. First, create the pipes. And then uh, move the pipes. Okay, to create the pipes, I'm going to start by saying I want maybe five pipes. So num pipes is five. And then we'll specify a distance between the pipes. And I'll just call that like window.width divided by, um, I'll do num pipes minus one. I think that's the right geometric relationship there. Um, okay, and now I need to actually create the pipes. So for i in range, num pipes. And I need to keep track of all the pipes that I make. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to create an empty list right here that I'll append each of my pipes to. Okay. So first, pipe is a new pipe. And I'm going to set um, the pipe center. And actually, the center of the pipe is where like the gap is between the top and the bottom, where the bird can fly through and Flappy Bird. And I want this to be a random number. So I'm going to, from random, import randint. And now, the pipe center should be a random integer, and it should uh, be lower bounded by 96, which is the height of the floor. So it's just the height of my floor image. And I don't want the pipe to be able to go all the way down to the floor. So I'll say maybe plus some offset 100. And then um, the gap on the top should be bounded by self dot root dot height. So that's the top of the screen. And then maybe minus 100, just so that you don't have the, the pipe gap all the way at the top of the screen. Okay, so I've set my pipe center. And then I'll also set um, pipe dot size hint to be none none. And then I'll change pipe dot pause to be, all right, this is a little bit tricky. Where do I want the position of the pipe to be um, when I spawn it? I want it to be off the screen. So I'll say window dot width. So at this point, the pipe will be completely off the screen on the right. And then I want to add a little bit of offset, which is based on uh, what number pipe I'm on. So that's I times the distance between pipes. Okay, so now I've got my X position for my pipe, and then the Y position should be 96, which again is the height of the floor image. So my pipe is basically sitting on top of my floor. Okay, and then the last but not least, pipe.size. The, um, the width of the pipe should be the width of my pipe cap.png image right here, which is 64 pixels. So I'll say 64 in width. And then for height, I want the height to be self.root.height minus 96. So root.height is the height of the whole screen. And then I want to subtract 96 to get rid of the floor. Okay. So there you go. Now, if I run this, I'll have all my pipes created, which is good. If I want to see them right away, I can remove this uh, window.width right there. And if I run it, oops, invalid property name. What happened here? Oh, I, there we go, my mistake. So now when I click start game, uh, oh, I didn't add the pipes actually. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've created my pipes, but I didn't actually add them to my screen. So first thing first, I need to self.pipes.append pipe. So now I'm keeping track of all my pipes. And then self.root.add widget pipe. Oh, I got a cat here. Hello. Okay, now when I run this, we should see when I click start game, 
all my pipes spawn. That's perfect. Um, the only issue here is that the textures are kind of screwed up and I can fix that by uh, going back to my pipe class. I had one thing that I didn't finish there. So in pipe.py, I'm gonna create a new function called def on pipe center. Basically this means anytime the pipe center is changed, it's going to redraw the textures. And the code to redraw the textures is in this on size function. So really actually all I need to do is call um, self.onSize. But if I just call it like this, it's not gonna work because um, it won't be sort of like drawn in the right, drawn at the right time, it'll be screwed up. Um, what you wanna do is clock.schedule once, then you call your onSize function and then call it as soon as you can basically. So in the next frame of your app, you will call this onSize function. And let me go ahead and import clock because that's throwing an error. So from kivi.clock, oops, import clock, there you go. Now when I run the app and I click start game, you can see my textures have spawned correctly and I've got these random pipes there. Okay, perfect. Um, one, two, three, four, five. The last one is probably off the screen right here. So I've spawned my pipes. Now the next thing to do is move the pipes and I wanna move the pipes once, or 60 times per second, just like I'm moving um, like the background, or just basically like a 60 FPS kind of game. So I'll say clock.schedule interval, self.movePipes, so I'll go ahead, I'll need to create this move pipes function, and I wanna call it 60 times per second. All right, def move pipes, self, and it has to take in the amount of time that's passed because that's automatically passed when you use the schedule interval function. Okay, so I'll say for pipe in self.pipes. Super easy to move the pipe to the left. All I have to say is self, or whoops, pipe.x minus equals time passed. And I'm gonna multiply this by a number just because otherwise it's super slow. So if I run this now and I click start game, Boom, there you have it. My pipes are spawning. They're all moving left. The last thing to do is make sure that um, pretty much like when, when one goes off the screen or when one is too far to the right, the last one is too far to the right, uh, you want the first one to sort of wrap around at the start. Okay, so let's work with that. To do that, so for pipe, all right, so we've moved all the pipes. Now we need to check if we need to uh, reposition the pipe at the right side, something, something like that. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so my logic for this is gonna be if the rightmost pipe, if the pipe all the way to the right of the screen is uh, further to the left than the distance between pipes, I'm gonna move the pipe that's furthest to the left all the way to the side of the screen. Okay, so what I wanna do here is get all of the pipe X values. So I'll call this um, pipe X's is list, and I'll use the map function. And I'll say lambda pipe, I want pipe.x, and work with the self.pipes array. Okay, so what this is saying is from my self.pipes array, go through each element, call it a pipe, and return pipe.x and put it inside a list, okay? So all I've got here is just a list of my pipe.x values. Now I wanna check the rightmost, so I'll say rightmost x, and that just happens to be max of pipe x's. So now if rightmost x is less than or equal to window.width minus um, distance between pipes, so basically, if the rightmost pipe has moved too far to the left, um, I need to redraw the one that's furthest on the left over on the right side. Okay, now let me, it doesn't know what this is because I defined it up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste the code um, because we're, we're, we understand what we're trying to do here. Okay, um, now if this condition is true, I need to get the most left x okay, or the most left pipe. So I'll say um, most left pipe 
is self.pipes and now I need to get um, the index of the left of the leftmost pipe. So I'll say pipe x's dot index min of pipe x's. Okay, there you go. And now I need to put most left pipe most left pipe. What a tongue twister. Most left pipe dot x to be window dot width. There you go. So let's run this and see if this works now. I will hit start game and you can see, boom, as soon as this guy now is too far to the left, it'll redraw the one that has gone off the screen and put it back at the right side. So I've got all my pipes spawning. They look perfect um, and they're randomly generated with like the center there. Um, next thing I need to do, I'll go ahead and throw in the Kibby bird. All right, so I just took a quick break and I made a couple of bird pictures. I'm by no means an artist very clearly here. I created two little sort of pixel art pictures. One will be um, like the, the bird's normal state. And then maybe this one, bird2.png, will be when you press down with your finger or your mouse, it changes to this picture. And when you release with your mouse or finger, it goes back to this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and put my bird in my app actually. First thing I wanna do is I will create a bird class. So I'll say class bird, and this is gonna inherit from the Kibi image. Um, and I'm actually gonna give it a velocity. I'll say velocity is numeric property. I'll just put zero for here. Cause this is how I'm gonna make it actually like jump up and down or move up and down. And I need to import numeric property from Kibi.properties. There we go. And now I'm gonna work with like the touch input. So anytime the user touches the app, so on touchdown, I will say self.source equals bird2.png, so change the image. I'll say self.velocity is 150. I'm just guessing what this number is gonna be. I'll probably have to play with this to make it um, feel better when the bird's kind of jumping up and down. And then also I wanna call super.onTouchdown and pass the touch. Just make sure that the touch is properly propagated through uh, the rest of your app. Okay, and then I'll define on touch up. And I'll do something similar. I'll say self.source is bird1.png and then super on touch up with the touch. Okay, I'm not changing the, changing the velocity in the touch up. And note that this on touch up and on touch down function, these guys will be called even if you're not touching on the bird. So really when I click anywhere in my app at any time, um, this on touch down and on touch up will be fired. Okay, so I've got my bird logic sort of defined here. Let me go ahead and throw it inside of my app. So I'll instantiate it right here, bird. I'll give it a source. To start, it'll have the bird one picture. And then I'll say size hint needs to be non none because I'm inside of a float layout as my root widget right here. Um, the actual size of the bird, my images aren't the same size, which isn't ideal. So I'll just use uh, the size of the bigger bird, I guess. So 46 by 34, 46 by 34. And then position at the start, maybe I'll say it's like, mm, I don't know, 20 and maybe like window, or sorry, root dot height minus 96, so that's the, minus the floor over 2.0. Okay, so if I run this, I should have my bird sitting at the middle of the screen, sort of. Um, and when I click it, it changes the picture. So that's good, that looks nice. Now we need to actually add in um, the vertical motion, okay? So a little bit of physics. Flappy Bird doesn't have perfect physics. I was looking it up to see exactly what they did. Um, but it's pretty easy to do. So what we're going to do is anytime we press the start game button, I'm going to start moving the bird. So I'll say clock dot schedule interval self dot move bird. I'll call the function and I'll call it one over 60. So 60 times per second. All right. So now let me create this move bird function. Def move bird self time passed. All right. So the bird, I'm actually going to need to reference my bird, so I'll go back to KV and give it an ID. I'll say bird. 
All right, so bird is self.root.ids.bird. There you go. And now I need to change the bird y position. So I'll say bird.y is equal to the previous bird.y plus bird.velocity times time passed. Okay, and now I also need to update the bird's velocity. So I'll say bird.velocity um, plus equals bird.velocity, so the previous bird.velocity, um, minus self.gravity times time passed. Okay, there you go. So let's run this and see what happens. I press start and my bird goes flying. Okay, what did I do here? Bird dot velocity times time passed. Oh, whoops. I shouldn't have had that plus equals there. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> All right, plus, there you go. Now when I click, my bird kind of hops up a little bit and he falls back down because of gravity. All right, so we've got our, our motion in here. We've got our pipe spawning. Last thing we need to do is um, collision detection or the last main thing. And then maybe a couple little details after. Okay, so I want my collision detection to happen anytime that the bird moves. So I'm going to say whenever the bird moves, call a function called self.checkcollisions. All right, now let's go ahead and code up that check collisions function. So check collisions. Um, first, I'm going to need a reference to the bird, of course. So I'll say bird is self.root.ids.bird. And now I'm going to go through each pipe and check if um it collides pretty much all right so for pipe in self dot pipes if pipe dot collide widget that's um that's a function that's just inherent in the kivi in any kivi widget class so collide widget and then you can pass another widget so i'll say bird so basically if the pipe and the bird overlap this is going to be true but then i also need to um, make sure that bird is between the gap or I guess check if bird is between the gap check if bird is between gap okay so the way I can do this is by using like the pipe center and like the gap size so I'll say um, if bird dot let's see the bottom of the bird is bird dot y so if bird dot y is less than um, pipe dot pipe center minus Pipe dot gap size over two. All right, then I'll call my game over function. So self dot game over, which I haven't defined yet. And so okay, that's if the bird hits the bottom of the pipe. And uh, okay, for the top, we need bird dot top greater than pipe dot pipe center plus pipe dot gap size over two. I'll call self dot game over. Okay, now let's game over function. Let's define it. Def game over. For now, I'm just going to change the uh, image of my bird so I can see visually if my check collision function is working properly. So I'll say self.root.ids.bird.source is nothing. So if my bird collides, um, it should turn to a white, a white picture. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens when my bird hits the pipes. <clears throat> Here we go. Boom, it turned white. Okay, that's perfect. And if I go through, it looks like I'm okay, but I just kind of suck at my own game right now. Yep, okay, so the collision is working. Now I need an actual, uh, some actual code in my game over function to sort of reset all the pipes, reset the bird, and make you have to hit start game again. Okay, let's get that. And I suppose actually we should um, also make sure that the bird, if bird.y is less than 96, because that's the floor, I'll call game over, self.gameover. Or if bird.top is greater than uh, window.height, also self.gameover. There you go. So now you can't fly. Um, but above or below the, the bounds of the screen. Okay, so the game over function. Let's see, first thing I wanna do is probably clear um, all of my pipes from the screen. So I'll say for pipe in self.pipes, self.root.remove widget because 
all my pipes are inside my root widget when I did the add widget function and then pipe. All right, so my pipes will be cleared from the screen. Um, and actually what I want to do is anytime I use this clock that schedule interval, basically I need to sort of stop that because um, this is what's making the game go. And I'm going to create a new function called like def uh, next frame or something that takes time past. And anywhere that I've used clock.schedule interval for like this move bird function, I'm just going to put the move bird function into my next frame function. And then I can comment this out. And instead of calling these separate different schedule interval uh, calls here, I'll just call clock.schedule interval self.next frame 1 over 60. And I need to pass time pass to this function. And now I'm going to do a search for schedule interval. All right, so I had move pipes on that schedule interval. So I'm going to uncomment or comment that out and move the move pipes function up here. Self dot move pipes include the time passed. And did I have any more move pipes? Um, oh yeah, scrolling the background texture textures which happened when the app started. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this whole thing and I will still move the textures, but only after the user clicks the start game button. So in the next frame, uh, we'll scroll the textures. There we go. Now when the user clicks start, the start button, it calls this next frame function once every 60 seconds and it calls move bird, move pipes and scroll textures in my background class. Okay. So basically when the game is not running, I don't want any of these to happen. So I need to cancel this function. The way I can do that is by giving this a name, I'll call it like self dot frames. I don't know. Self dot frames is this scheduled interval. And then on game over, I can just say self dot frames dot cancel. There you go. And the last thing to do is get rid of all the pipes inside of my self dot pipes. And I'm just going to clear that in the start game function. So self.pipes should be zero whenever you start because down here it will add all the pipes. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. When I start my game, you see the pipes coming in. And I'm going to hit one and boom, everything is stopped. The bird stopped moving, the pipes got removed from the screen. Um, the background stops and if I hit start game again you can see alright we're back to square one so this is pretty much the game actually um, oh my god right now it's like practically impossible to play so I think what I'll do to make it a bit easier is go back to my pipe code and I'll increase the gap size to like 100 and we'll see if this makes it easier start game Okay, I think I can probably do that. Let's see if I get through some. There we go. Oh, okay, I died. So, let's see. What I want to do now is probably make the start game button look a little bit nicer. And get like a score counter. And also when my bird um, dies, I'm going to have it reset back at the top. Right? Okay, let's do that. <clears throat> okay, game over. The bird does no longer need to change to white because I know what's happening now. Um, but actually, I'll still reference the bird here. I'll just change the bird's position to be where I have it when I start it up. Right here. <clears throat> okay, so I'm resetting the bird's position. This has to be self.root. There you go. Okay, so the bird position will now be reset, and it no longer turns into a white picture whenever it hits something. Um, let's make this start button a little bit nicer. I'm going to say background normal, and I'm going to make it transparent just by giving it a completely transparent image, which I have right here. There's just nothing in there. And background down will also be the same thing. Transparent.png. Size hint, I'm going to have this be um, actually 
I'll get rid of the size hint and it'll change it to like one and one by default. So my button will now be over the entire thing here and you see start game. And when I click, there you go. Oops, that's a problem though. Oh my God. Okay. Um, <laughs> so basically you need to change the position, like get the button off the screen or disable it or something. Uh, okay, I think, yeah, I'll, so when you, when you click it, I'll say self dot disabled equals, no, that's, yeah, that, that'll work. Self dot disabled equals true, self dot opacity equals zero. Now when I click it, it should go away pretty much. There you go. And then on the game over function, I want to bring that back. To do that, I'm going to need to give this an ID because I have to reference it from Python. I'll call it start button. And then we'll go back to my game over function. And on game over, we'll reference the button. So self.root.ids.start button dot disabled will be false because I want it to be enabled. And then I also want the opacity to be one so that you can see the text again. All right, let's see if that works. So I click, my bird flies up, and boom, I'm back to start game. All right, that's looking good. Start game button is working. So for my score counter, I think I'll put a label down here at the bottom so that it doesn't overlap with like my pipes or my, or my cloud or bird or anything like that. Um, so it's just gonna be a little label here that updates anytime you go through a pipe, okay? So I'll go to my KB file and I'll go back here and I'll just throw in a label. This is going to need an ID. I'll call it um, score. The size hint Y, I want to be none because I want to specify the size or the height. And the height should just be the height of my floor, which is 96 pixels. <clears throat> and text at the start will be zero. And I'll change the font size to be something bigger, maybe like 40. Okay, if I start this, there you go, now you see this big white zero right here, and we need to code in the functionality to um, update that anytime the bird passes through a pipe. So I'll go back to my main.py, and let's see, I think what I'll do is, I'll update it anytime the bird was colliding with a pipe, and by colliding I mean like overlaps with, with a pipe in this direction anywhere. So even if you went through, you're, so, you're still colliding with the pipe, you're just not ending the game. Like this is a collision right there, so collision right here, and then if when I get through, there's no more collision. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> if pipe dot collides with your bird, I want to say like the bird was in a pipe. Um, so I'll say self dot was colliding equals true, and I have to create this was colliding uh, or instant initialize it up here. Okay, was colliding should be false by default. All right, so basically, if I hit a pipe, <clears throat> um, I was colliding. Uh, actually, no, I'll say is colliding. Is colliding equals true. Let me initialize is colliding up here. Is colliding to be false. And now down here, after I check collisions, I'll say if self dot was colliding. So if I was colliding in the last frame and I'm not colliding in this frame, then that means I've gone through a pipe. And so I can say self.root.ids.score.text. I'm going to change the text of the score label. So I'll wrap it in a string. I'll wrap it in int. And I'll get the text that's in there right now. Self.root.ids.score.text. So I, I've converted the text to an integer. I'm adding one and then converting back to a string. Okay. And now I need to change self.wasColliding to be equal to is colliding. There you go. And let's see. Anytime I start the game, I think I'll write self dot was colliding. I'll just re reinitialize that to be false. Okay, so now anytime I go through a widget, I should update the score. Let's see how that works. Start the game. See the score is zero down here. If I can play my game, oh, there's no way I'm hitting that second pipe. There, I've got one score. Okay, one. Oh, we need to we need to reset this to zero anytime I start the game again. But let's just see, this should go up to two now when I get through here. Yep, two, and it breaks. Okay, perfect. 
So now basically at a start game, I'm gonna set the score. So self dot root dot ids dot score dot text equals zero. And I think that's it. I think that's Flappy Bird. Uh, maybe some changes you could do is make it so that like this this jump right here between these two pipes might be like impossible. Oops. Uh, so you could probably put in some logic here to make it so the pipes don't spawn so drastically different from each other, like the, the center of the center of the pipes. There you go, two points, three points, four points. It's actually pretty fun. I mean, of course everybody knows Flappy Bird. Six points, seven. Okay, so I've mastered my own game. Alright, well, anyway, that's it. That's Flappy Bird and Kibby. I hope you guys liked the tutorial. Um, and stay tuned for more videos. Alright, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.